As you learned in the previous read aloud, while they continued to hunt, fish, and gather, many native peoples also began to farm. This was a very important development that changed native people's way of life quite significantly or importantly. They began to plant and harvest crops such as squash, beans, and maize. Farming added to the food supply and allowed some groups of people to have a choice to stay in one place instead of migrating to follow their prey. Native people's knowledge and understanding of nature, particularly of plants, was acquired over many years. Over time, they experimented with growing local grasses and gourds. Eventually, many of them developed the ability to grow a wider variety of plants. In addition to increasing their food supply by farming, native people also began to use plants to make such things as clothing, medicine, homes, and household items. They began to raise animals such as turkeys while continuing to hunt and gather and fish. And so after a long period of time, many native peoples having migrated across North America came to live in groups called tribes. Each tribe had its own name, language, set of beliefs, and overall cultural identity. How each tribe lived, the clothes the tribe members wore, the food they ate, and the homes they lived in depended greatly upon the environment in which they lived. This is especially true of language. Different words were created that related specifically to regional beliefs and habitats, and so the languages of these native people became widely different from region to region and from tribe to tribe within a region. Trade brought native peoples from different regions together and a greater understanding of farming techniques spread. When tribes from different regions met to trade, they not only shared their ideas of farming techniques, they also traded crops and seeds. In this way, tribes began growing crops that were not native to the region in which they lived. With a more reliable food supply, and the ability to store corn for two to three years to be used when there was not a good harvest, the population of native peoples in North America began to increase and large settlements began to develop in different regions. That's not to say that all tribes settled in one place, however. Some, such as the Shoshone, Cheyenne, and Blackfoot of the Central Plains never really settled in a true sense of the word. They chose a nomadic existence following the enormous herds of buffalo that moved with the seasons. The buffalo provided them with everything they needed, including food, clothes, and the teepees they lived in. It's believed that at one time more than 30 million buffalo roamed parts of North America. The culture of these Central Plains tribes grew out of their nomadic lifestyle. Other groups, such as the southeastern Cherokee and the northeastern Iroquois, moved from place to place in the wintertime when the earth would not yield any food and hunting was the only way to survive. Tribes such as these returned to their settlements in the spring. Nevertheless, once large native populations began to live in settlements, there came the need for new rules. These rules were designed to help a large number of people live together in one place. And so native tribes created their own unique governing systems. Generally elected leaders or strong family groups were responsible for establishing tribal laws and making sure that they were obeyed. Spiritual leaders also guided their communities and participated in the decision-making process. Eventually individual tribal laws, languages, clothing, customs, and religious beliefs began to set them apart from each other. Clothes were made from local resources too and varied enormously from region to region. Furs and animal hides were worn in the colder regions and on the Great Plains, and cloth woven from plant fibers was common in the warmer regions, and local plant dyes were used to embellish clothes and possessions. Many Native Americans also embellished their skin with markings, piercings, and tattoos. As the people of each tribe developed their own language, they told stories about their own history they handed down their history from one generation to the next in this way. They created their own unique fables and mythological tales to help explain the world in which they lived. They celebrated life, worshipped a variety of nature gods, and gave thanks for the resources planet Earth provided them. By the time Christopher Columbus and other Europeans arrived in North America thousands of years later, the journey that probably began with the nomadic people following herds of prehistoric mammals 
had brought about the creation of a very different world than that of the Europeans. It was a world that included many hundreds of unique native tribes, farming, trade, diverse or different cultures, and the building of immense ceremonial mounds. Native tribes were now dispersed or spread all across North America. Because Christopher Columbus thought that he had arrived in a part of Asia called the Indies, he called these native people Indians. However, they never referred to themselves as Indians. Once the Europeans arrived in North America, the traditions of many of these native tribes were threatened and eventually destroyed. Armed confrontation, the introduction of new diseases, and cultural clashes meant that for many tribes, much of their traditional way of life was lost to them forever. What had taken thousands upon thousands of years to create was all but gone for many tribes within 400 years. In the next part of this domain, you're going to learn about some of the tribes who survived and still live in various parts of North America. You'll discover what made them unique and knowledgeable and how they've helped and continue to help shape the history and culture of the United States.